He became the chief prosecutor of the worst of all trials ever tried in a courtroom, the Eisengruppen case. The AP called it the biggest murder trial in history. One million victims, never before and never since has there ever been a case of that magnitude. All 22 defendants were convicted at the end of that trial. This was the tragic fulfillment of a program of intolerance and arrogance. Vengeance is not our goal, nor do we seek merely a just retribution. We ask this court to affirm by international penal action man's right to live in peace and dignity, regardless of his race or creed. He was also, during that trial, the first person ever to utter the word genocide in a courtroom turning that word into a legal term that he has fought for to prevent for the rest of his life. Genocide, the extermination of whole categories of human beings, was a foremost instrument of the Nazi doctrine. He has been perhaps the most tenacious force for the cause of international justice in any of our lifetimes. And it is my great pleasure to introduce Ben Ferguson. In order to have an orderly society, 
There are three things that you need, three fundamental things, whether it be in Chicago or New York or Germany or France or anywhere. And that is you need laws to define what is permissible and what's not permissible. You need courts to determine whether the laws are violated or as a medium for settling disputes. And you need a system of effective enforcement. Those three points, laws, courts, and enforcement, are the foundation stone for every lawful society. Now let me tell you a little story, primarily for the kids. There is my study at home, I have a glass door, these little alcohol, right? Write my books, not for publication, my notebooks, they've been published by publishers, but I will write all my notebooks, I have all the documents. And as the sign says, here lies Tico Bra ad infinitum. It was put on by my oldest daughter about 30 years ago. Here lies Tico Bra ad infinitum. And that explains me, and I'll tell you what that means. I'm sure there's no pain here who knows what that means. Tycho Brahe was a Danish astronomer, and he lived before Columbus. And it was believed at that time that astronomers, Copernicus and Galileo, others, would be able to understand the meaning of the universe if they could study the stars. They see what's happening in the Vast firm. And Pico was a nobleman, persuaded the king to let him build an astronomical observatory in the town of Gwen, which is near Elsinore in Denmark. Remember your name? Hamlet, go down to Elsinore, it's right off the coast of Elsinore. And he built, his, he invented the telescopes, and he built an observatory there and he charted the stars. He made a note every night, uh, he'd go out and make a chart of the stars. Well, he did that for about 20 years. And the old king died. And the uh, young prince came on the throne and said, what's going on over there? We got a budget, but they're spending money. Well, send some of his men out. General accounting office equivalent. He said, hey, wake up, Tico. Because you know, strong astronomer, they have to sleep during the day because they work at night. He <laughs> said, so, wake up, Tico. What have you been doing for these 20 years? You've been what? I've been charming the stars. Each one is very precise. I can swear to it myself. I observed it very closely every night and I moved it movements in relationship to the other stars. He said, Well, what do you well, what do you got to show for? He said, Well, I have 75 lines of all these charts. What do you hope to achieve? Well, if I live long enough, I hope to reach a hundred. I said, Why are you mad? That's the use of it. Well, I must admit that I have not yet been able to figure out the meaning of the universe in this. But I believe that someday somebody will. And I will have saved that person 25 years of labor. And the interesting sequel is that when our astronauts landed on the moon, and I gave a symbol of that to Mrs. Cowell, his close friend, when they landed on the moon, they had with them the tables of Tycho. So perhaps I've been wasting my life, and someday you may land on the moon too. Thank you very much.